When it comes time to release your software into production, do you cross your fingers? Do you pray? Do you guess that it's all going to go well? Or do you know that it's going to work? Let's take a look at what it will take to remo remove guesswork from the process of releasing our software into production. Hi, my name's Dave Farley. In this episode of Feynman Bytes, I'd like to look at applying the ideas of science to solving problems in software. In this episode, we're going to look at applying experimental evidence to solving problems in software release. In this occasional series on Continuous Delivery Channel, I take inspiration from the work of Richard Feynman, the Nobel Prize winning physicist, and his thoughts on science and engineering, and see how we can apply that kind of thinking to problems in software development. In one of Feynman's most beautiful insights about the philosophy of science, he once said that it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, if you guess, and that guess can't be backed by experimental evidence, then it's still only a guess. How can we apply that kind of thinking? I believe that much of software development is based on guesswork. I also believe that when we start applying a, a more uh, rational approach to problem solving uh, and applying humanity's best problem solving technique, that is science, then we can see dramatically better results. I think this is across the board with software development, it happens in all aspects of software development. And in this series I, I hope to touch on different aspects of all of those sorts of things. In a previous episode of Feynman Bytes, I talked about the scientific method and focused on what it takes to be experimental. I think a useful, just to recap those ideas, I think a useful way of thinking about being experimental in this context is that we need four things. We need to make a hypothesis, we, have, we need to have some kind of idea, some, some theory about uh, what's going to happen. We need to take me measurements in order to validate our hypothesis and we need to gather the results of that, th those measurements in terms of feedback so that we can think about what it means and, and reflect on what, what the impact of our ideas are. And finally, in order to be able to disambiguate the signal from the noise, we need to be able to control the variables. We need to be able to, un as far as we're able to, focus on just the things that we're interested in learning and, and assume that everything else is going to be stable. So let's look at this in the context of software release. So what's our hypothesis for a software release? Well. I think that the, in general, for most releases, our hypothesis is that the software is going to continue to work after the release. That means that things like data migration are going to work and the software itself is going to be doing things, it's going to be an increment in behaviour of some kind that we can measure and kind of value it from the product point of view. But fundamentally, everything's going to keep working at least as well as it was before and hopefully with some, some changes that make it a bit better or at least some changes that we can kind of evaluate and decide whether they're better or worse. The next step then is, is measurements. So how do we measure that kind of thing? How do we measure our ability to, to, that our software is going to carry on working once it's released? I think that the, the huge level of experiment uh, that we need to apply for this and the huge level of measurement that we apply for this is the adoption of automated testing. Automated tests are a form of experiment. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get on to code. But automated tests are a very valuable source of experiment in our code base. Technical experiments that evaluate the quality and applicability of our code. We also need to automate the deployment process, process if we are releasing things and we want the release to be reliable and repeatable and predictable and that variable to have been eliminated, then automating the deployment process using techniques like you know, the techniques that continuous delivery describes is vitally important for us to be able to achieve something sensible that we can then evaluate and rely upon. That means that we also need to manage the configuration of the environments in which our software operates. If we are releasing software into an environment, whether it's a test environment or a production environment, we need to be able to be confident that the environment is correctly fit to, to, to take that release. 
And so managing, actively managing the configuration of that environment is part of establishing, a, uh, a controlling the variables and, and, uh, and establishing a, a, a pattern for us to measure the effectiveness of our deployments. And the last part of this in, in terms of production, in terms of uh, from a measurement point of view, is about monitoring the, the, the software in production and health checks in our applications. And this goes further than just kind of tracking CPU usage CPU usage or disk usage, those sorts of things. We also need to be thinking in terms of um, the business impacts, or, or, or monitoring the business impacts of our, our systems and validating those too. How do, what kind of feedback mechanisms can we use to, to kind of support more reliable releasing in, in this context? I think continuous integration and continuous delivery are key to this to allow us to evaluate these ideas. But also things like dashboards that give us clear indications of the, the, the state of our software and how it's working. And then once we're into the release process, ideas like canary releasing, where we release our software to a small, safer subset of our user base and evaluate the software in those contexts to see if it's going to harm anything or anyone uh, 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 as part of this release before we roll it, roll it out more widely. Canary releasing is very widely used in large web organisations these, these days, but it also has a role to play in many other contexts. In terms of the, the control of variables, again, small changes is one of the most important things in order to be manage the variables. If we want our releases to be simple, reliable, repeatable, then the best way that we can do that is that the delta between releases is not large. If we are releasing software into production once every 12 months, then the difference between the software, the new version that we're releasing and the old version that is in production is enormous. The data migration to move all of that data into the new, new, new study is going to be big and complicated and risky. So working as a series of small changes allows us to reduce the risk of each, uh, of each change and again to control the variables. We understand the context. Everything else is the same except for this one little change. If we make each change, if we go to the lo logical conclusion, if we imagine each, each individual change being immediately released into production, that's in many ways the safest way that we can operate because it's only that change that is, that is making any difference. We've eliminated all of the other variables. Effective configuration management, again, plays a key role in our ability to achieve this. And the reliable delivery that continuous delivery and deployment pipelines uh, promote is fundamental to all of these ideas, promoting our ability to release changes in small chunks and using techniques like effective configuration management to make that reliable and repeatable on an ongoing basis. Quality software and monitoring too are aspects of controlling the variables in, a, in, in our software. If we can modularize the software that we're creating and so isolate change in one part of another versus another, that again gives us a, a, the ability to limit the blast radius, and control the variables, control the risk of our experiments as we go into, as we release our changes into production. Canary releasing is a good example of this. Canary releasing is widely used and there is again some excellent stories uh, for, uh, of companies employing this on massive scales. One of my favourites is the Netflix release, release process. Netflix use continuous delivery as their, their approach to releasing change into production. On an automated basis when a developer commits a change the, the deployment system identifies where in on the planet it's the middle of the night and it releases that change first to data centers that serve that part of the planet. This means that if you are living um, in New Zealand, you're probably getting a worse experience from Netflix than in other, in, in other time zones. But essentially what this means is that at any given time when a change is released, it's only insomniacs watching Breaking Bad in the middle of the night that are hit or at risk of being hit by risky changes. Netflix have built a whole uh, arsenal of support around this idea to limit the variables. One of the things that they do is that they monitor actively the behavior of these canaries. They call it a canary index. 
and they have a score for each release, for each canary release, that kind of monitors the health of, of this change in the middle of the night somewhere on the other side of the planet. And as, day, as daylight starts to come round and as it starts moving into more prime time, they start making serious decisions about whether to leave that release in place, roll it out to other data centres around, allow it to roll out to other data centres around the world, or to can it because it's showing some, some um, unanticipated uh, problem. This approach is, is, a, is a very effective way. When people talk about ideas like testing in production, this is the kind of idea that they're talking about. This is, it's not the same as just putting stuff into production and crossing your fingers and hoping everything's going to work. This is at the end of a chain of risk reduction through other processes, test-driven development, acceptance test-driven development, automated deployment, configuration management, all of these things to reduce the number of variables, to, but, but, but ultimately to determine the impact of our release on our users. Uh, we can't predict everything and so canary releasing is one very applicable strategy, very powerful strategy that allows us to just understand the in, initial impact to, to, to our users of, of, a, of any given change. In summary, the release techniques of continuous delivery allow us to take control. Instead of dreading the release day, we can take it for granted because we've already tested that our hypothesis for this uh, uh, for release will work. We've already successfully deployed the change into production, we, in a, into a configuration managed test environment if we're controlling the variables. We've tested the behaviour of the change that we are making. We have to the limits of our ingenuity, check that our hypothesis that this change is going to make it into production safely and our software will continue to work is correct. We've measured and gathered feedback on the change um, and by controlling the variables associated with release we now have confidence that things are going to work. The other aspect of being experimental though is that things might not work. We might have got it wrong, we might have made a mistake and so th by Thinking in these terms, and again, thinking about the ways in which things can go wrong, we can cover ourselves, and with techniques like canary releasing, we can give ourselves the opportunity to have missed something and still be safe in our ability to release change and not damage our clients or our customers or our users' expe uh, expectations. The software, we can always reverse the change that we're making if we've taken control of these variables. The next time in Feynman Bytes, I'm going to explore how we can uh, uh, reduce the guesswork in coding. Thanks very much for watching.